the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. It's going to be a very brief session, and I trust that the Lord will grant us understanding. Conferences like this, as I would always say, it's an opportunity to encounter the word of God. The boundary of God's commitment to a believer is his word. The word of God defines the boundaries. God is not mandated to commit himself outside of the jurisdiction of the word of God. The word of God defines the boundaries. So every need that the word of God does not create space for cannot be met the bible says he upholds all things by the word of his power hallelujah we live in very challenging times as again has been observed on this altar but more than that i think that the men are being more challenged than we realize and in fact one of the ways that God judges a territory is by withdrawing men and what they represent that when God wants to judge a territory please give us Isaiah chapter 3 Isaiah chapter 3. Let's just look at the first four verses and then I'll just build from there. Isaiah chapter 3. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, takes away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stock. Okay, from hence, if we can just have King James, just KJV. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It says the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. So this is judgment happening. Next verse. Verse 2. What does he withdraw? The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet. Now look at the caliber of people he's withdrawing. What then is left of his society when all these men are gone? The mighty man, the man of war, the judge, the prophet, the prudent, and the ancient. Verse 3. The captain of 50 and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artifice and the eloquent orator verse 4 look at what is left of any society that does not have men and i will give children to be their princes and babes to rule over them someone say god forbid speak to us O god in the name of jesus christ Believers have been given a mandate and I think that for a very long time the whole idea of God's agenda is, is, is a concept that I would respectfully observe has not been thoroughly understood in the body of Christ generally. We have pockets of ideas as to what God has done or what he desires from men. If you ask at random, you pick any believer who has been very faithful in church and you ask him, what does God really want? He would give you ideas like he wants souls saved. Others will say he wants people blessed. Others will say he wants people to prosper. But if we are unable to understand God's mind and the full, the, the full scope of God's idea and God's expectation, we will continue to shadow box around the things of the kingdom in hope that what we are doing is satisfying the heart of God. 
But the Bible does not leave the will of God and his intention as a mystery. Praise the Lord. The Bible lets us know in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11, Jesus was having one of his mentorship sessions with the disciples and he says, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. So it is not hidden. He desires that we have that understanding, that we can live our lives with intention and with accuracy, knowing that I am living my life satisfying the desire of the Father, not guessing, not hoping, not wishing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, let me start tonight by saying that believers are called many things in Scripture. Theologically speaking, believers are named and classified uh, by a twofold uh, index. Number one, believers are named according to our identity. It's, it's a system of identification with Christ. That means that the Bible describes believers with respect to their identity. So names like um, you are the sons of God. Names like branch. Names like joint heirs. These, these are all names, descriptions of believers that attempt to show them the depth of their connection. Are we together now? So the first naming of believers is according to their identification. The goal is to help you see and, and conceive as a reality the depth of your oneness with the Christ. But the second system of naming is according to function and assignment. So believers are also called kings and priests. Believers are called light and salt. Believers are called ambassadors. Believers are called witnesses. This description does not just attempt to show our identity. It is a revelation of the responsibility dimension. Hallelujah. If all believers know is that I am one with Christ, I am a joint heir, as, as, as powerful as that is, it does not create the balance. We have to understand that there are names that activate that sense of responsibility. Hallelujah. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, I'll run through some scriptures. We may not have the luxury of projecting all of them because of time. You may do well to just scrabble them down. I apologize if I run faster than you're writing. Praise the Lord. 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. The Bible observes there that we are a, the Bible says we are a chosen generation. It calls us a royal priesthood a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And then the Bible says we are mandated to show forth the praises. To show forth the praises is the word doxazo. To make manifest that which brings glory to the king. To show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Daniel chapter 7, please, and verse 27. Just running to a, a few scriptures that, that lets us know that believers are not just roaming around the earth. God did not just make man, uh, gave him authority and just allowed him to do what he, whatever he has to do. No, there, there is a description. There is a definition. Are we together? The Bible says, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. This is a very clear description that a time will come creation regardless of the pride of mankind. Something will bring man to his knees and he will acknowledge that there is a God in heaven. And that there are individuals who have been mandated to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to make this a reality. Are we together? Psalms 8. This was the contemplation of the psalmist. Psalm 8, for the sake of time, let's go to verse 4. The psalmist began to wonder why God was so interested in man. He was a very, very wise person. And on the strength of the manifestation of that grace upon his life, he was just contemplating. Why would God not replace man and create another species of humanoids? 
What, 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 what was in man that would make God to chase man? He would rebel against God and they would be given to their enemies and none of them would come to say, God, I'm sorry. And yet God in his own act, he would send a prophet to now call them and say, look, let's talk again. God did not hide his vulnerability towards man in scripture. And so the psalmist contemplating on this now began to write this. He said, what is man? I wish we had the time when you read the previous verses, you say, when I consider the lilies and this and that and that, he now came to the conclusion that what is man? Just give us from verse 4. That thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him. Verse 5. He says, thou hast made him lower than the angels. The word there is Elohim. Thou had made him lower than God. Not just Angelius, the beings. You have made him just a little lower than God. Then you have crowned him with glory and honor. The next verse. It says, thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put how many things? All things under his feet genesis chapter one last verse and then we begin to build from there from verse 26 this was the account of the creation or what we would call theologically speaking the recreation of the earth after the flood that brought judgment in genesis 1 and verse 2 the bible says from verse 3 and god said light be and he saw that it was good. Then he began to bring forth other things. When we get to verse 26, the Bible says, And Elohim, and God said, Let us make man in our own image. Now look at the formation of man. It's amazing how the Bible is very meticulous. It, it tells you what was in the mind of God in the making of man. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that this, this church, this church is, is quite, quite a plethora of absolutely brilliant people. When I was hearing the names, I mean, I was wondering, I said, my God, what a church. When you have a church with so much uh, intellectual resource, I think it's, it's a great advantage. And so I believe that we're not in ignorance as to um, when, when, when the details in a product is described, is so that you can appreciate the product. Praise the Lord. When you take a very quality product, you turn to the back of your casing, your wrap, they would go and give you details. It contains vitamins, it contains this. In fact, this has already provided X amount of your recommended daily allowance. So God is not just saying, let's make man. He wants you to appreciate what went into the making of man. Are we together now? So he says, let us make man, but let us make him after our image. Now, theologically speaking, and I hope I, this does not create any kind of um, debate and all of that, but we know that Adam was not the first man. Adam was the first man created in the image and the likeness of God. Both Bible and science agree to the fact that there had been an existence of humanoid species the Bible tells us that even the first occupant of the Garden of Eden was not Adam himself. It was Lucifer, the son of the morning. Thou was in Eden, the Garden of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, I'm saying that so that we'll understand this. When, when Lucifer was cast down and there was the judgment that was in Genesis 1 verse 2. When God was making man... Lucifer was somewhere in the horizon watching what was happening. Don't you think it was only God and dust? There was an audience watching the creativity of Elohim. Giving to man what made Lucifer. This was what Lucifer wanted. This was the exact reason for the rebellion in heaven. So when God casted Lucifer down so that he does not look like an insecure God, he said, what I'm dealing with is rebellion. I'm secured enough to give all of me into an entity. Remember that the goal of Satan was to create a parallel government so that you could honor either God or him. That was his offense. He did not want to replace God. He wanted to be an option to God. 
So when he was judged down, now God, he watched the artistry of God, breathing his own life. Let us make man in our image. What is image? Our character. And then our likeness, our functionality. So let us make man in our character and let us make man to function like us. Are we still together? It says, and this pishi of being, whoever it is that emerges from this word, that man, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air. These are different jurisdictions. Are we together now? The sea, the air, and over the cattle and the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female created he them. 28. Hallelujah. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, every living thing that moves upon the earth. So we know that man is the zenith of God's creation. The symbol of his artistry is man. Our corporate mandate, therefore, let me read something I just wrote here very quickly. Our corporate mandate is twofold. It's important as believers that we understand that we have a corporate mandate given to every believer regardless of the geography of your assignment it does not matter whether you are a preacher whether you are a career person whether it's in family we have a corporate mandate and the corporate mandate is twofold number one the first of it is to establish the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men this is the first mandate everyone is given this mandate that for as long as you have the privilege of breath in your nostrils, there is an expectation from God towards you that you become a contributor to seeing that the lordship of the Christ be established in the hearts of men. And the spiritual strategy that the Bible uses to achieve this is called the gospel. Please understand this. The gospel the gospel is first a message. It's a message that contains an information that when that information is communicated, the Spirit of God is mandated to back that information. That whoever receives that information as true, there is an advantage to receiving it. It's called the life of God. So the gospel is a revelation of the love of the Father. Please, let's follow this carefully. The gospel, what we call the gospel, the message of the gospel, is a revelation of the love of the Father demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, his son. And the object, the object of that sacrifice is the entire creation. Man first and then creation. I hope you know the gospel is not limited to man alone. The effect of the gospel must be seen all across creation. So the first of our corporate mandate is to see to it that through the instrument of the gospel, the message that saves, that every single man upon this earth will come to a point where there would be recipients of the life of God by acknowledging the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ as proof that God loved man. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, John chapter 3 and verse 16. He so loved the world and demonstrated that love by giving Jesus his only begotten. But now he's not the only begotten. Today he's the first of we the begotten. But at that time, he was the only begotten of the Father. Are we together now? He sacrificed Jesus. And by the shedding of blood, the humiliation of the cross, his death and burial and resurrection, today we have access to the life of God. And the Bible says, whosoever believes in him, alongside everything that has been done. Listen, there is 
an exact information you have to believe about God to be saved. Not every information about God saves. Believing he's a prophet does not save. No. Believing God is kind does not save. Believing God is a good God does not save. In fact, believing God is God does not save. You will have to believe in the substitutionary sacrifice of his son to the end that men be saved. Are we together now? The Bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. So this is very, very important. That means for as long as I am breathing, there is an expectation from God towards me that as I walk the length and the breadth of the earth, regardless my career, regardless my personal plan, regardless my pursuit, whatever it is, in the mind of God, you are only useful to him to the degree to which you are a contributor to this. If you are on earth today and your life is not directly helping for this to happen, as far as God is concerned, there is no justification for your continuity. Are we blessed? This is not a mandate to preach us. No. It is our, the first of our corporate mandate. That means the moment I wake up in the mind of God, someone has woken up and now there is a privilege given that men will be able to see the love of God again. They will be able to acknowledge Jesus again. And listen to me. Dear Lord, how do I say this? There are many ways to evangelize and there are many ways to communicate. Are we together? And did you know that, I wish we had time to deal with this, in the Great Commission, man was given the assignment, go ye. He was given the jurisdiction, all the earth. He was given the message, preach the gospel. He was given those to talk to all creation, but he was never told how. The only part of the Great Commission that was left was the strategy. He created flexibility so that we can evolve. Are we together? That the assignment remains the same. The object remains the same. But the system can change. Today, you can stand somewhere trying to talk to someone and the person can say, this is, this is a crime. Maybe you are an armed robber or something. So that means that there has to be a lot of creativity and dynamism in our communicating the gospel. Are we together now? We live in very evil times when um, the way we used to do things as far as evangelism may need a lot of adjustment to be able to suit the reality of today's world. But it still does not mean God has bent his expectation. He still expects that there be joy every day in heaven because I woke up from my bed alive. And if my life is not sponsoring this, then I am a hindrance to the joy and the satisfaction of the Father's heart. Are we blessed? I'm trying to be as simple as possible. Establishing the Lordship of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind us that hell is real. I know that for many of us, it's been a long time you had this, but let me drum it. Hell is real. Someone woke up this morning and is now there as we speak. The Bible says it is appointed unto men to die once and after it the judgment. Believe me, when people die without Jesus Christ, they are going to hell. Regardless of how we try to convince ourselves, it is a reality. There are people who are going there. Some of them are our loved ones. And the Father's heart continues to bleed where are the people who will arise and see to it that lives are changed see to it that people come to the saving knowledge of jesus we unfortunately the times that we live in now has not given us the allowance to really see the value of the salvation of a soul but it is a miracle when someone is translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of god's dear son it does not look spectacular, but by that singular decision, a man's eternal destiny can be different. Do you know that all of us are going to spend eternity? There's no such thing like, will you spend eternity? The issue is location. You will spend eternity. 
Are we blessed? Let me hurry because of time. Number two, the second dimension of our corporate mandate, and this is, this is the part that really concerns this conference. I just needed to establish the first part. The second part is, in, in, in summary, it's called kingdom advancement. But then the second dimension is establishing the lordship of Jesus Christ across every strata of human activities. That it is not enough to just see that souls or lives are saved. An individual can be saved, but a territory can be unsafe. And it will take extending the ideology of the gospel to institutionalize the value system of the kingdom across every strata of human activities. Failure to do that will endanger those who profess the name of the Lord and it will ultimately sabotage the purposes of God. Our commitment will not end uh, in seeing that Christ is established in the hearts of men alone. The territory must come under the influence of the value system of the kingdom. And the primary tool for achieving this is called dominion. Dominion. Dominion is a spiritual system by which we bring creation under the influence of the Christ and his value system. Remember the mandate is that let it be done in earth as it is in heaven. God is not the God of Christians. He's the God of all flesh. And the Bible and history has proven that everywhere the value system of the kingdom is respected and honored, that society becomes a reflection of heaven, regardless of the personal convictions of the individuals about the Christ. Every society today that we celebrate their development, whether it is in the health sector, whether it is in technology, whether it is in the morality standard of that society, regardless of the individual persuasions they have about the person Christ, I can guarantee you that that society is working in that level of dexterity because they, the men there have allowed the value system of the kingdom to find expression. Regardless of the individual personal encounter with Jesus if our territories does not subscribe to the value system of the kingdom we, it will remain a place of danger and a place of decadence if you are together say amen, amen. Mm. influence what is influence influence is the ability to compel men to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty that you devise a mechanism through your results, through the dexterity of your life. Are we together now? That you substantiate your belief systems with a dimension of results that is so compelling, enough to cause people to change their ideology without using force, without using cruelty. It's called influence. This is the dimension of kingdom advance the church has neglected. We have done well in evangelism, commendably so. But we have ignored influence. And the times that we live in will require that believers attain a dimension of kingdom influence that will allow the value system of the kingdom to be both preserved and extended within a territory. Are we together? Hmm. So this is very, very, very important. I am a, a student of history sociologically speaking and even from the bible and i've studied revivals and i've studied the moves of god and i've studied the socioeconomic impact of the gospel across different territories through many centuries i have found out that every time evangelism was used as the only tool there was a side effect to the growth of those people you would find out that they would do well in terms of their personal spiritual growth but there will be systems that create subjugation of the saints are we together now Yes, that kingdom advance through the gospel is twofold. Number one is the message that saves. Number two is the ideology that creates dominion. It is this twofold operation that makes the saints to be comfortable to serve God and then the territory to be civil enough to allow humans to behave like the zenith of God's creation. 
every time you see crime, every time you see decadence, the, 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 the destruction that befalls nations, sadly including Africa, is not necessarily a product of a limitation in evangelism. It is that the other side that has been neglected for years, we are now beginning to pay the price. So we have individuals who can die for Jesus. We have individuals who love Jesus passionately, but we have a territory that is outspokenly rejecting the value system of the kingdom. This conference is an attempt to bring the restoration of that other side. Are we together? Yes. And I can tell you where this started from. When you study through church history, you will find out that there was a period in the church where believers were greatly persecuted under emperors like Nero. Sometimes they would not even last 72 hours. If you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you knew that you would almost, you would be dead in in days are we together now so over a long period of time under that harsh climate of persecution most believers did not think of things like productivity creativity because their ultimate concern was martyrdom now under emperor constantine and under certain conditions believers were now allowed the liberty to express themselves and they did not know what else to do with their lives because they had been through seasons of of martyrdom are we together now and so many of them considered carnal and unspiritual to participate in socioeconomic activities and it began to advance an ideology that makes believers to not participate in socioeconomic activities. And sadly speaking, we are still victims of that thinking till today. So the scope, and, and I want to say this respectfully, I know that there are people online following. Um, this is the reason why it is important I say this respectfully, even to preachers, we must be enlightened enough to understand the scope of our spiritual communication because the church is a platform for mentorship. People become a reflection of the ideology of their leaders. Are we together? The narrative that limits the relevance of a believer to just evangelism and salvation while allowing creation to... to knows dive the bible calls us the light of the world that means the definition of darkness is the world without the church hallelujah kingdom advance what is kingdom advance it is the 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 use of every the deploying of every and any scriptural mechanism to see that Christ is enthroned first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. I made up my mind as a man of God that I will never raise a people who are only spiritual. I believe in influence. I have seen the power of influence in transforming society. Is God blessing us? You know what honor it is to have the secretary to the federal government for instance sitting and listening to the word of the Lord, his convictions are influenced by the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And that is safety and a blessing and an advantage for the nation. Do you know that God must find space in the places and the corridors of power for the value system of the kingdom to remain? It is an honor. It is not something to be ashamed and afraid of. Are we blessed? Influence means to have the, the, an effect, the capacity to have an effect on the mindset, the beliefs, and the convictions of a person. Let me just rush very quickly. I want to touch on what I call pillars of dominion. And now this is where every man here should, should just, just lend me your attention for a few minutes, if I may request. Because having established the fact that we have a mandate and that our mandate is twofold. Number one is evangelism, the use of the gospel to see that men are saved. But number two, to take advantage of the dominion systems that have been allocated to the saints, to see that creation 
and every territory where we are domiciled, that, that we become extensions of the value systems of the kingdom. And it is not just by doing Christian activities. The value system of the kingdom has nothing to do with being a Christian. It is a value system that reflects the character of Christ. Remember, God is not the God of Christians. He's the God of all flesh. I hope you understand what I'm saying. There is a dimension of God whose applicability is to everyone alive. With no bias, with no prejudice. He sends the rain to believers and unbelievers alike. And there must be a dimension of the influence of the kingdom that will extend to our territories that everyone will know that there is a God in heaven regardless of your spiritual convictions. But there are pillars. Please, please understand what I'm saying now. There are pillars. Dominion does not just happen by intention please believers understand god is a god of systems that means in his character he does not do the same thing twice when god operates he shows you a model of what he intends then he builds a system around that activity so that engaging the system brings continuity to that process are we together he made man once he made a woman once and programmed within those species a system that if engaged will produce continuity that means for instance if a woman is barren it is satan attempting to stop a system that has been built so when you pray and her womb is open it's more than a miracle it is god replying creation that i am still god i'm supervising the system that i built are we together now Respectfully speaking, Africa is a very spiritual continent, but we are also a superstitious continent. There are dimensions of the power, the grace, and the influence of the kingdom that will not come through superstition and wishing. We will have to understand the systemic character of God and sustain the grace to engage the principles that make for those results. Otherwise, we will continue to profess truths we cannot defend. For instance, there is a spiritual system that is responsible for growth. You don't just grow um, by default. You may do so biologically, but every other aspect of growth must be engaged intellectually and so on and so forth. There is a spiritual system that governs sustainability. People don't just last. There are principles that make it happen. Are we together now? There is a spiritual system that governs restoration. I call them systems of advantage. God in his building man knew that man would have times where he would lag in time. And he built a system that can be engaged that man can restore time. Finances for instance. I think this is probably one of the most superstitious areas in Africa. Respectfully speaking, we have this illusion that somehow, somewhere, there will be some kind of, and, and don't get me wrong, God is, is the source of all blessings and it is true. But the, the refusal to understand the whole counsel of God is what continues to betray our profession for many years. And so people do not rise to that level of economic stature that gives them a voice in society. God is talking to men. We cannot talk to men and not talk about these issues. Are we together? Because the Bible says that any man that cannot take care of his family, paraphrasing, has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. And my goodness, there are so many people, especially at times like this. We've acknowledged the fact that the pandemic and other related issues have caused the economies of nations to come to their knees. But this now is the time to show the superiority of the value system that we hold on to. That there is an advantage in our dealing with God that is able to help us route a system. This is what will compel the Gentiles to come to our light. The Bible says in Isaiah 60 and verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Amplified. Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, Rise to a new light. It says, For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And then the Bible says, For darkness shall cover the earth. Is the word tohu wa bohu, confusion and gross darkness the people then it says but upon you the glory of god shall arise verse 3 says gentiles hallelujah 
Gentiles, that the men in family um, worship center will, will rise to a level of dexterity that Gentiles will begin to come and say we have discerned God in this church there, there is something about the men of excellence the anchor men an anchor is built to withstand the pressure it can stand it says Gentiles will come to your light but it never said their kings will come to your light because the kings also have light. The kings only come to the brightness. Your miracles will attract multitudes, but it's your wisdom that will attract kings. Kings to the brightness. Remember, this was adumbrated in the life of Solomon. The Bible lets us know that other kings came to pay homage and to bow to him. But there was a strange woman from Utopia who would not pay attention. She was a woman who had results by herself. And nothing about Solomon's wealth and influence touched her. But consistency is a proof that you are living by principles. You cannot remain by mistake. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. You can start by mistake. You can have short-term results. But consistency, kings don't come when you start. They keep watching. When you remain and are sustained, it's proof that you have gained mastery. So when the influence of Solomon was sustained, Sheba now came. And she came with gold and everything and went through and, and saw the dexterity of his palace and the order and everything that was there. And her conclusion was that half of this was not told me. There is a message that will not be attractive to kings because kings by default are arrogant people. They have a history of their pain and their sacrifice. They will not listen to nonsense. It will take a dimension of the kingdom that dumbfounds their wisdom and dumbfounds their experiences. Hmm. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. He was not asking a miracle. He says, Rabbi, forget the nonsense we say in the day. We know you are a man sent from God. There is something about your understanding of the kingdom. You will not see Nicodemus in a crusade ground. No. He came to Jesus by night. It's time for certain people to start coming by night. To call you and say, look, forget what we do. This is just a ritual of leadership. But I know what I'm looking for. I have discerned the grace and the wisdom of God. That the opening of your lips is a revelation of a counsel that can bring to an end decades of confusion in people's lives. Please hear me. There are things when you have only poor people look for you. There are things when you have only wealthy people look for you. There are things when you have only your tribesmen look for you. But there are things when you possess all men will seek for you. It's a short one. We'll soon pray. Are we together? So I want to show you a few pillars. We'll start tonight and then conclude tomorrow as we just allow all the other speakers to just move by the Spirit. There are pillars. It is my desire and it was my prayer to hold the hands of our mother and the matriarch of God alongside the chairman of the Anchors Men Fellowship to be able to help strengthen the hands of the men in this church through knowledge because we rise up by revelation. It takes more than intention. The Bible says, Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2, he told me, stand up and Ezekiel did not have the strength to stand. Even though he wanted to stand, but he says, the spirit entered me. Ezekiel 2 and verse 2, and set me upon my feet. You don't rise because you are tired of sitting. You rise because your light has come. The things that I'm going to be sharing with you in the next two or three minutes, if you allow me, will just start... Listen to me, I submit to you with all humility. They are not opinions. These are truths that are backed up by the integrity of God. They've been vetted through the lives of exceptional people. By the grace of God, we do not share cunningly devised fables. 
These are principles that have made kings. The Bible says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. It says, with me is riches, wealth, and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. There is a species of men God is producing in this conference. Psalm 112 says, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Verse 1, that delighted greatly in his commands. Verse 2 says, his seed shall be mighty. Psalm 112 his seed shall be mighty upon earth. He says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Then he says wealth and riches shall be in his house. And yet his righteousness endures forever. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? It takes light. When spiritual illumination comes to you and you understand the systemic character of God, then you know that there are dimensions of his power that were vested in his principles. Listen, please. There is a dimension of God's power that is invested in encounters. When you encounter God as a reward for meeting him, there is a dimension of his power and his anointing that comes to you. But there is a dimension of God's power that is invested in principles. You don't have to be a Christian to access that dimension. You just have to be enlightened enough to understand the systems. And this is the system by which we dominate the cosmos. So he said it this way, to be wise as serpents is one of the few times God will use the serpent to tell believers what do you have to do with the serpent but he says if you are living in the cosmos there is something about the serpent that will become a weapon for you was it not Goliath's own weapon that David used don't forget David used his sling to hit Goliath but he used Goliath's own sword to remove his head there is something you have that is in the hand of the world it will take the wisdom of God to know how to collect it When David went for war, he did not need to carry a sword because he already saw Goliath with one. And he knew that there is a way you can collect things. Are you ready? Please pray in one minute. Open my eyes, oh God. Open my eyes. I give you a guarantee in the name of Jesus Christ. That no one who possesses this light will be small. I will multiply them, they will not be few. I will glorify them, he said. They will not be small. Hallelujah. These are spiritual pillars that activate the systemic dimension of God's power. That every man and extends to everybody who engages these principles. I give you a guarantee backed up by the jealousy of God. That you will watch yourself rise. You will veto whatever background. Veto whatever limitation. And rise to a point where the nations will be compelled. This is not the first time a nation or territories are desiring to call the name of the Lord through the leaders. It happened in the days of Daniel. Africa will call upon the name of the Lord. And it will not just happen by crusades alone. There will be a dimension of the supply of God's grace. There will be an extension of influence. Hmm. Number one, the first pillar that I would share, thank you so much for the time, is our spiritual connection. The first pillar that controls dominion is your spiritual connection please write it down life is spiritual i think we, we have to start from there and just deal with it be honest enough life is spiritual ladies and gentlemen i respect profoundly all of the years of intellectual labor and all of the years of of stretching our understanding intellectually from border to border I took out time to lavishly acknowledge the value of being intellectually sound but living in today's world approaching life only from a standpoint of science and sociology is only a recipe for fatality life is spiritual there is a dimension of life that cannot be explained by science there is a dimension of life that sociology cannot capture are we together? Life is spiritual. The Bible does not hide the fact that life is spiritual. 
First Samuel. Please let's run through these scriptures just five minutes so that we can wrap up. We'll continue in the morning. First Samuel chapter 12 from verse 6. Please read it as a prophecy for your own life. Just the A part. Ready? Please read. One to read. And Samuel said unto the people, uh -huh, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. There are things only God can do. It is the Lord that advanced Moses. He moved though, but in the realm of the spirit, there was a force pushing him forward. He did not just move forward by intention. We live in a society that sometimes try to downplay the value of God. No. In the beginning, God. It must remain our formula. Not in the middle of your experience. God must be Alpha, Omega. In the beginning of your business, God. In the beginning of your family, God. In the beginning of your career, God. When you begin to be embarrassed about the existence of God and your connection to him, you are authorizing darkness. Daniel lost every other thing but this one thing. The gods, the spirits of the Medes and the Persians continue to manipulate a system to frustrate the conviction of Daniel. And he said, no, I can lose every other thing but not this. And they sat in a parliament and passed a decree to just frustrate one man's prayer life. And Daniel said, no way. If I get into the pit, it's still the God that is, I'm praying to that will save me. So I, I would rather stay there. Your spiritual conviction. Your spiritual conviction. Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 28 to 31. Please just write it down. We're not reading it. The Bible talks about the young men getting weary. It talks about people fainting. It is not backsliding. It is the reality of carrying a human body. That no matter how energetic and how visionary you are, the vicissitudes of life will beat you to a point where one day you will get to a point where you will have to stop and catch your breath. It has nothing to do with backsliding. It proves you are a man and it proves you are alive. For as long as you are on this earth, you just need to live a little longer. A, a one more hour, one more day, one more second. And you will find a need to say, ah, God, I will need your help. God designed it that way to make sure we don't forget him. He knows that there is a tendency in us. So he allowed that limitation to force man to always need him. Your spiritual connection. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. Please just give us that one. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. The Bible says with men, this is impossible. Anchor men, with men, by October till December, it may not be possible to make anything out of your finances or out of your life. But when you add God to any equation, the calculation changes. Anything plus God is the answer he gives. With God, it is possible that in one week, God can program a climate of favor over a man and wipe the shame that came from January till September. There is a God in heaven. Please hear me. God is not an experiment. The monarch of the universe. Regardless the noise that is made by the pride of men from nation to nation, we submit that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? So your spiritual connection is the first pillar that ensures your dominion. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus. And then he began to tell them that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Paul is, Paul is saving you years of shadow boxing. He's saying any physical thing you see happening, don't approach it just physically first. That there is always a spirit supporting it. It was James speaking to the church in chapter 2. Don't turn there, just write. And verse 26, he was teaching on faith and works. And he veered off to say, for as a body without a spirit is dead. So every body you see has a spirit. Do you know trouble is a body? There is a spirit behind it. An unfavorable situation is a body. There is a spirit behind it. When Jesus calmed the storm, there was the wind and there was the wave. You could only see the wave, but there was a wind energizing it. 
Life is spiritual. There are forces that continue to fraternize with human entities across the globe to see to it that the saints in light are victimized, to see to it that families are subjugated. There are horns that continue to speak. Zechariah saw them, what seest thou? And he said, four horns. He said, these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Jerusalem, against Israel, so that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. Please believe it, there are horns. Africa, hear me, there are horns. The devil will not cross his leg and watch your influence rise. He knows what will happen. He has already seen your worship in the secret place. He saw you rolling before God in the secret place and saying, God, as you rise me, your, as you lift me, your name is also lifted. He, he, it was not only God that had the worship. It was not only God that had the confession. Satan had it too. And vowed a vow that as far as this family is concerned, I will see to it that this one who is becoming a rising star will come down. Ah, but there is a God in heaven. That when God gets up and shakes himself and say, I am ready to lift you. There is no power in existence. No fraternity of men. I tell you this. History is full of men and women who were shocked when they saw the finger of God writing. Listen, God does not seem to move every time. But every once and again through history, he will say, man, shift. Let me show you once and again so that you will teach your children that God is still alive. And I believe that soon we are getting to a point where God is about to make a statement in this country, in Africa. He's about to make a loud statement. I am God. Hallelujah. Your spiritual connection. The whole world lies in wickedness. You send your child to school and you do not know what happens. You just know he returns in the afternoon or in the evening. You do not know the onslaught of hell that is waiting for him. Like, like the fowl are waiting to catch the bird. Your conviction. You can get a gate man for your house, but he cannot stop demons. You will need the ministry of angels for that one. You can do your best to be as visionary and responsible as you can, but we are just limited. Gaskiani, we are men. There are things that your strength cannot go beyond. And at that point, you must tap into a fountain of grace. The songwriter says, when my heart is overwhelmed, he says, lead me to a rock that is higher. Not a rock that looks like me. God is speaking to someone here. Maybe you are an anchor man just hearing me and saying, Apostle, you may not understand the bills that are on my head. I'm barely hearing you now because my landlord is waiting for me. I'm barely hearing you now because there is a things did not work out. Listen, continue to put your business plans and everything in place, but give space for a mysterious manifestation of God. Continue to prepare for your career. Continue to give the best. But please, in all your arrangement, give space for God. Because there is a God in heaven. And your spiritual connection is not a religious reality. It's an advantage that is provable here and now. Spiritual connection is provable sociologically. It's provable economically. Is provable all wise. The psalmist said, Many are they that rise up against me, Psalm 3. He says, Many are they that say, Where is thy help? He says, But thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me. He called him my glory and the lifter up of my head. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people, he said. He said, I lay me down and I slept. I waked for the Lord sustained me. Men, let us not be embarrassed. What we are facing now is greater than our strength. 
whether it is the pandemic, whether it is the financial situation, whether it's stability in our organizations, we have done our best. We have stretched our intellect from border to border. The world is having to check their data again. The world is having to research again. For instance, work is going on tirelessly across the nation to try to get a vaccine. And several things are happening across the earth. We need God and we must acknowledge it fast. The jealousy of God does not allow him to come without being called. He will only prompt you. But he will need you to call. The Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Not them that want him. He says, call upon me and I will answer. And I thank God that we have people who are calling upon the Lord even in Nigeria. I trust that the grace of God will come. And in the name of Jesus, soon enough, we will we will rise above the pandemic, rise above the situations that are coming here. And we thank God for the presence of our Father here. So that while we are speaking, He's representing the government of our nation. And we are declaring in the name of Jesus that there is a mystery to this country. It's not all about human beings. There is the jealousy of Elohim backing us. And that in the name that is above all names... When the devil is just about to destroy families, just about to destroy careers, then his majesty speaks and says, I'm also part of the equation. And my presence makes the difference. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Are you ready to pray? The second pillar, and then we'll take it from there tomorrow. The second pillar that commands dominion is the power of transformation. The mystery of superior belief systems. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, I beseech you brethren from verse 1, by the mercies of God, he says, that you offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God holy and acceptable and he calls it your reasonable act of worship then verse 2 he says and do not be conformed to this world the word world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this age there is an ideology listen please there is a belief system that comes with this age there is a way sociology has shaped us our mindsets, we have come from different backgrounds and these backgrounds have, have sponsored certain belief systems that no matter how well-meaning we are, they sustain the ability to impede our rising and that if we want to command dominion, we must sustain both the humility and the fortitude to receive superior knowledge. Superior knowledge. Superior knowledge. Your belief system is the only gateway that both the Holy Spirit and demons use to access your life. Belief systems are powerful. They shape your understanding about life, about God, about finances, about family. Let me give the last illustration and then I'm done. Gentlemen, please can you come? Just stand here, you stand here. Watch this. Look at this, my friend here. You come. Let's assume for instance that this guy, just an example, God forbid. Imagine that this guy is an arm robber and imagine that this guy is a pastor. Are we together? You call him an arm robber because he's robbing people and you call him a pastor because you think he's helping people. Both of them, if they become corpses on the ground, you don't call this an arm robber corpse. You call it a corpse. You don't call this a pastor corpse. You call it a corpse. So who was really the arm robber? The mindset. Who was really the pastor? The mindset. Not the bodies. The bodies were slaves executing the mindsets. Listen to me. Regardless of territory, regardless of background, you will never rise to, a globe, to become a global reference just having a great idea. I dare you to contend for superior knowledge. Superior knowledge and information, we're going to deal with that tomorrow. You must be willing to break out of the limitations. Many of us have been held down by the shackles of culture, unhealthy dimensions of culture, unhealthy dimensions of our past, unhealthy dimensions of our sociology, even spiritually speaking. When God wants to help you, he does not take you where you want to go. He takes your belief system there. He travels he, he, right where you are. He will journey with your mind to see the possibilities. 
when that happens then there is no limit to what you can do you must find a way of indoctrinating yourself that your life is a reflection of your belief systems our finances the health of our our families they are merely report cards they are telling us what is going on in our belief systems for instance respectfully so when a man slaps his wife the hand is innocent the hand only obeyed what the mind is saying the, it is the mind that slapped the wife not the hand because the same hand can hold her and strengthen the union the hand is an executor of the mindset if finances go down the finance is a report card is showing that there might be something in our understanding that needs to be adjusted. You see, we must be meek enough. This is the hardest part of the Christian man's experience. It's not giving your life to Jesus Christ. It's the humility to allow tra transformation will sting our ego. Transformation will rattle our belief system. Sometimes what we call the core convictions will even have to come under fire. But happy is the man that submits himself to superior belief system this church the anchor men the results you have celebrated so far is not just is the grace of God yes but I submit to you that the grace of God came upon minds that were enlightened mind that were intellectually sound mind that were flexible to embrace a global perspective this is the result that we celebrate today and if we must rise further than where we are then we must sustain the flexibility to receive more because there is more our experience today is only a report card of our mindset of yesterday tomorrow will show what we are conforming to today are you ready to pray thank you please rise up on your feet let's wrap up for tonight dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. the face of development. Lord, grant me the...